Good afternoon, everybody. Brian from RVing Illustrated here. I uh, want to talk to you a little bit about something that uh, many people who are new to uh, purchasing RVs may not know. Um, some things that dealers don't want you to know. Um, and it's uh, about purchasing RVs. Uh, especially new ones. Uh, I'm not going to talk about used ones. I really don't have any experience really in buying used ones except from private individuals, not really from dealers. Um, but anyway, we've we've owned several RVs. We've owned pop-up, uh, travel trailer, motorhome that we bought brand new. Uh, we bought a, a, a pop-up from a private individual. Um, before also so anyway we have a little bit of experience we're by no means the you know the most experienced or the almighty on all this but I have you know in my lifetime I'm 46 years old I have purchased over 15 cars in my life um, most of those maybe three four at the most might have been used I don't even three comes to my mind right now but uh, I've, I've bought a lot of uh, vehicles and you know to include some RVs and everything in my lifetime and, and uh, kind of grew up going with my dad when he would buy cars he always bought new I, I, I never knew a used car until I first bought my first car and that was a used one but I always went with my dad when I was younger and uh, I remember going in and sitting down and them trying to go back and forth with a, on a deal. I remember my dad getting mad, walking out, you know. Uh, and that's the way I learned. And uh, my dad was a tough negotiator. Um, he, you know, he didn't always get the best deal, but he got the deal that he thought was fair to him. And uh, he learned some of their games and tactics and everything. And, you know, the way it happened back then it still happens a similar way there's there's new tactics they're always thinking of new ways to try to to make money and try to get around on you but uh the funny thing is is you know all my adult adult life um, well actually all my life up until probably five years or so ago um my dad once told me that uh a good deal is when the buyer and the seller are both happy and you know, I was like, "What?" You know, after all these headaches and, and stuff that I've gone through, that I put my wife through, and you know, she doesn't like going with me. She likes looking at cars. She likes looking at RVs, but she does not want to be in the room <laughs> when we're trying to make a deal. And uh, you know, I I know the dealers got to make money, and I don't expect to get something for nothing. And but uh, I do refuse to be screwed over or taken advantage of yeah I know they do that to a lot of people and, and my aim today is to you know if I help out one person out there today to, to get a little bit better of a deal or didn't know that they could get a better deal than what they're getting uh, then uh, you know this is success for me so anyway this all comes back true to us or true to me because you know, we had bought a uh, motorhome two years ago. It said we owned a 2013 Class C motorhome that we bought brand new. It's only got 6,200 miles on it. Um, MSRP was 96 or 98,000. I can't remember. We got it for like 70. And of course, we got an extended warranty. And by the time you get that and some other stuff, you know, finance and price goes up. And and we're we, we are about down to what we what we originally pay is about what we owe on it now so we're you know we're we're in the 60s in the high 60s of what we owe on the RV but anyway we were we've been thinking about trading it in and trading my wife's car in which is also a 2013 uh, SUV and trading them both in on something like a road trek uh, Mercedes-Benz Sprinter and uh, we know it's a downsize and there's still going to be three of us going it would be tight 
put our ideas, you know, uh, her car just sits at home most of the time. She, you know, works from home, so uh, she doesn't drive the car very often that she has. And that uh, Mercedes Sprinter, the road truck, could uh, act as a second vehicle for her. She needed to go somewhere, she could get in and go and drive somewhere. And we kind of also like the smaller uh, thing of it, and you know, less suspicious if you want to park somewhere overnight, you know, if you want to pull into a parking lot somewhere, uh, easier to park. We just, our lifestyle of camping is more of that style. We don't like to go to RV parks and just go in there and sit. You know, we like to go, we like to explore, we like to, to do the things locals do. We like to do things that tourists like to do on the outside too, but we like to we like to get outside the park and do those things. I mean, a lot of times we like to stay in the parks too, sometimes to do, the, you know, take advantage of certain things, you know, especially if it's at the beach, we you know, we like being at the park, go to the beach, but, um, anyway, we just felt it kind of fit our, our needs. And, uh, anyway, we, we went to the, to our local road trek dealer, which is about 30 minutes away from us. And they had a couple, you know, the, 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 color choices they had were not our first choice by any means but they weren't ugly um, they had two different models they had a road track RS and a road track e-track and we liked them both um, some small differences between the two um, uh, price difference uh, not really sure what the price difference between the two I know the MSRP price difference was probably about five or six thousand dollars between the two um, I don't think they even gave a price on the e track They gave a price of uh, $125,000 on the RS. And I understand Road Trek is a different beast than most other RV, you know, RVs or motorhomes or travel trailers, whatever. This is where I'm going to help you out right here. When you go to an RV dealership, and you're looking at a traditional trailer, a fifth wheel, a motor home, they'll have the MSRP. That's the manufacturer's suggested resale price. Not the sale price that the RV dealership saying it is, but the MSRP. You generally can get somewhere around 30%, give or take 5% off that MSRP price. So, let's say $100,000 um, 30% would be $30,000. So, you know, if it says MSRP, uh, $100,000 and you get it for $70,000, you got 30% off. That's a good, that's like a, a good ballpark. If you get 25%, you be happy with it. Uh, you probably, you might be able to get a little bit more, you may not. It, it, you know, there's a lot of different variables that depends on uh, whether or not that percentage is going to go up or go down. Um, but if you get 30, be very happy. If you get more than 30, be ecstatic. Um, people do it. And I'm not going to say it can't be done. People do it. I, I've heard people say that they've done it, whether they, they've done it, they're fibbing or whatever. Uh, I've seen it numerous times. People say they've got 30% or 35%. Uh, i also seen people, from the looks of it, didn't even get 10% which my father always said on the car that when you go into a, a dealership, they automatically should take 10%. It should not even be a negotiation. If you if you have a $20,000 car, they should take $2,000 off the price, the MSRP price, right off the bat, no matter what. But then, of course, you add all the other incentives and whatever you can talk them down to. And, you know, they try to get you on these dock fees, these seven or $800 dock fees, which is ridiculous for them to send, you know, do paperwork. If they paid somebody fifteen dollars an hour to do your paperwork, it'd take them over forty hours just to make up that seven or eight hundred dollars. That's ridiculous. I know they don't spend that much time on doing damn paperwork. So dealers, get rid of the freaking dog fees. That's just ridiculous. Just you know, that's an insult. Raise your prices. Do not come down. But don't insult people with dog fees and, and writing writing it as that. That's stupid. Anyway, back to the road trek. So, you know, we go and, and, and we're talking to this gentleman and salesman and, uh, you know, he does a little trade-in thing and I had already sent him the paperwork on our 
RV and and then he's doing it on the on the car and you know he, he comes back with a trade-in value of what we owe on the car. Do I think it's worth more? Yes. Could I sell it for more of my own? Yes. Um, but I would have taken, he was a little bit lower than what the trade-in value was, maybe $5,000. And, you know, $1,000 in the whole scheme of things of a $125,000 vehicle that we were looking at, or actually it was, MSRP was 146 or something like that. In the whole scheme of things, you know, it's not really that much. I'm not going to argue over that. Um, but then he came back with a trade-in value on our motorhome, like $50,000. $20,000 difference than what we owe on it. The NADA guide online, now it doesn't show trade-in value for RVs, but it shows your retail. Retail value on our motorhome was in the mid-70s. So, what do I think they're going to do? Yeah, they, if I would have said yes, I'll take $50,000 and eat the other $20,000 because I love this road track so much. I don't know if they're going to do that. Spend a few hundred bucks into it, detail it, have their mechanics, you know, do some touch-up stuff on it. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing's broken, really. So, you know, let's just say even they put $500 in it. They're going to put it on the lot for over $70,000 and say, oh, it's below black book anyway so when I make a comment to the salesman that no no it's worth a lot more than that and then he's like oh well do you have the NADA and it's not the first time I ever heard a salesman say that trust me and you know do you have the, the dealers NADA uh, trade-in value guide do you have access to that no I don't have access to that but I'm not stupid um, yeah I know you're gonna make more money and I've also heard that, you know, used cars uh, is a more money maker than a new car. So, but I'm not going to get raped on it. And that's what kind of what I feel like they were trying to do was that they were going to rape, rape me on it or try to rape me. I got pissed off. I walked out. And, uh, you know, of course, they got the email the next day. Oh, sorry, I disappointed you, blah, blah, blah. And so, hey, hey come up on your price, you know, on, on my trade-in come down on the price on your motorhome you know your your 125 is only 15 percent of your msrp and you know and i've been on you know road treks uh facebook group that they have there or one of them and then the road trek people are bull testing no offense to any road trek people who's watching this but uh they get a little testy. And, of course, there's a lot of people say, oh, you only can get 15 to 18% off. Well, that's bullshit. Sorry, my French, but that's bullshit. Uh, you can get more off that. And, of course, Mr. Uh, Jim Hamill from Road Trek, you know, he's the CEO. And he's come there and mentions, of course, this is Road Treks are not like other RVs. And, you know, you're not going to get the 30 35% off like you do others and blah, blah, blah. There's no, that, not that much markup in it that the dealers, you know, for the dealers... Um, bull crap on that too because people have posted that they've gotten 25% or a little bit more so there must be close to that, that sort of markup in there for them to get it to make money but anyway <clears throat> so I go back online and I'm looking around well lo and behold there's another dealer about 3 hours away maybe 2 and a half hours away and they have an RS same color looks like the exact same model and if this, there's any difference, MSRP price, two, three thousand dollars at the most, at the most. Um, they have theirs listed for one fifteen, and uh, you know that's that's a little bit higher than than what the you know that's I think that's close to twenty percent of what the MSRP was. I might have my numbers off. Maybe it's 15 and the other one was lower. I, I can't remember. But anyway, you kind of get where I'm going with this. They were $10,000 less on the unit. And that's what their advertised price was. It was $10,000 less than what the other dealership had on the basically the same unit. And uh, I let the other dealership know. and say, hey, look, you know, there's, oh, you know, no, you know, I guess we just uh, ordered ours too, too uh, loaded or something. No, they look the same. 
look about the same. I don't see any additional features that stand out that would make a $10,000 price difference. They also offered me $5,000 more for the trade-in. They gave me, they offered me like $55,000, which was still, I'm not going to take. Still, you know, it's better. You know, heck, the $10,000 cheaper than the other place is a lot better too. But it's still, the deal was still not right for me. It just, it still does not feel right. You know, if they would have offered me maybe $60,000 for my trade-in, yes, I'd be eating eight or 9000 dollars on it, but I would feel better about it. You know, I wouldn't feel as bad as twenty thousand dollars. And uh you know, and then of course the price difference and other, so you know, then then there was a the difference of trading in the uh SUV that we have and they didn't want to give as much as you know, they were off by a couple thousand dollars from what the other people was. So there was, you know, I think all in all they were probably better by fourteen thirteen fourteen thousand um, dollars it just it just like I said it just it was not the right deal and I'm not 100% happy with that I think it can I think it can get better and who times will tell you know they they come back to us and if they're watching this telling you come back to me sixty thousand dollars hundred fifteen thousand dollars for yours I'll do it but uh, you know don't tell me that the uh, NADA trade-in value market whatever the bull crap they say is you know fifty thousand dollars like that one said but yet you're going to sit there and you're going to tell people well in a in ada book retail says it's seventy five thousand or whatever it was yeah that's a bunch of bull crap if you want to sell a, a an rv if you want to make a customer you know do them right and uh anyway hopefully this this will help um some of you folks out there that uh who are looking for RVs, uh, especially if you're looking at traditional ones, if you're looking at a, sorry about that, state trooper running a radar back there. But anyway, if you're looking at traditional ones, you know, if you're going through some of the other companies, Keystone or uh, Jayco, Coachman, you know, some of these other bigger companies, something that's not specialized like a road trek, um, yeah, you know, if you see an MSRP of something, you know, that's a hundred thousand dollars, you know, go in there and offer sixty-five thousand. Um, they're not going to take it, probably. They they may. Yeah, you, you may get up to it. You know, they. But you know, go back and forth. That's what you know. Start start off there. Start off at thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars. I mean, if you want to pay full price, you don't want to. You don't want to go back and forth. By all means. Like I said, my father said it's good deals when buyer and the uh, buyer and the seller are happy. So if you're happy with paying that price, uh, then by all means, I just you know I, I know I can get something cheaper like that. I will. You know, people don't shop at Walmart because it's such a great atmosphere, such a nice place. They shop there because things are cheaper. You know, people don't go buy their clothes because their clothes are better quality and they're you know it's better buying atmosphere than going to you know Nordstrom's they, they buy them because they're cheaper so uh, people want to save a buck and uh, so do I I don't always save a buck I, I waste a lot of money but uh, you know when I can and when I want to I'll, I'll save it anyway if, uh, if you have any questions or comments please leave them below uh, if you haven't liked us or subscribed to us go ahead and subscribe yeah, if you like the video go ahead and like it if you don't like it go ahead and don't like it give it a thumbs down I don't care I really don't pay much attention to it I know there's some trolls out there they're probably giving a thumbs down yay but uh anyway if you find this useful let us know uh, check out our website rvingillustrated.com you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash rvingillustrated uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, we we do post something every once in a while on Twitter, and our name there is Arving Illustrate without the D. And uh, we'll talk to you later, guys. Have a good one.